But Theo Dandan joins us now from the University of Ottawa Epidemiologist and Science Commuter. Welcome to the show. Thanks, doctor. Thank you for having me. Tell me, tell me about this. So if I've been exposed and I've tested positive, do we know how or if I'm immune? That is the big question, right? And the short answer is we don't entirely know. The long answer is you probably are. But the, what remains unknown is how immune are you and how long it will last. So when we're exposed to an infectious agent like this virus, um, we usually mount an immune response, right? So uh, there are a series of antibodies we produce, two in general we talk about. One is called the IgM, the other is IgG. IgM antibodies we produce pretty much right away. But we care about the IgG antibodies, which are these long-term neutralizing antibodies. It seems that most people, almost all, who contract COVID do produce these long-term antibodies a couple of weeks after infection. What remains unknown is how much you need to actually give you a sense of immunity and how long that immunity will last. And that is uh, arguably the multi-trillion dollar question, not even the million dollar question, if you count up the world economy. Um, And have you seen reports, I've seen a few out of Italy that suggest this latest version of the virus or it is it is showing up weaker. Uh, it is not as strong as it was in March. Do we take anything from that or no? Yeah, so I know what you're talking about. That's a report by uh, Dr. Zangulo who claims that the swabs he's experiencing are less potent. And a few things to keep in mind there. First is that now that the epidemic is waning in Italy, they're testing more and more lesser symptomatic people. Lesser symptomatic people, by definition, will have a lesser viral load in the swabs being taken. Uh So he's probably not detecting lesser potency. He's just detecting more people who are lesser uh, experiencing uh, the the disease. So that's a bit of an epidemiological bias, we call it. Okay. Um, I wouldn't take a lot from that. But to get back to immunity, we know from monkey studies that um, some monkeys who are exposed to the virus develop antibodies, and then they cannot get reinfected for about a month afterwards. We don't know beyond that what that means. And we know from looking at SARS and MERS, which are also coronaviruses, that almost everyone developed immunity for about two to five months. And after that, the immunity declined somewhat. So if we're able to extrapolate from those viruses, we're likely looking at immunity from this disease. But again, they're different viruses, and we cannot make that conclusive determination. And it's not just people being careful about saying, yes, you're immune. You need scientific basis, numbers, samples, thousands of people before you can definitively tell the public, yes, once you have it, you've got some immunity. Correct. That's exactly right. And also different people respond differently and it depends on how sick you are and how much of an immune response you mount, which is why natural immunity is not the same as artificial immunity. Natural immunity is what we get when we get the disease and then recover. Artificial immunity is what we get from a vaccine. Mm. The advantage of a vaccine is we can calibrate the vaccine to give you a maximal or optimal immune reaction so that you probably are going to be immune with few side effects. So if, seeking, mm, sorry, seeking ahead, natural yeah. infection is not an advisable path, which no. is what some people are thinking about. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, and I've just got a, a minute left here, but um, if SARS and MERS, if that pattern is correct, let's say we're making an assumption here, the several months of immunity, what does that mean for second wave? Uh, given the infection rate right now? Not much, I would guess, right? Not much, exactly. Um, the majority of people are still susceptible. Over 95% are still susceptible. So it has minimal, if any, impact on the likelihood of a second wave. Dr. Raywat Diodandan, we really appreciate your time today. Uh, there's been, uh, I like to say with our newsroom colleagues, we've we've all learned a bit, uh, quite a bit about, uh, about infectious diseases. Uh, We've all had to uh, very, very quickly, and uh, uh, we always appreciate an epidemiologist weighing in. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. So there's...